Hello, welcome to Tim Anderson Horse Trading. As you might be able to see, I have a horse trailer behind me. I am on my way to look at, ride, evaluate, and possibly purchase a show horse for one of my students. In this video, we're going to talk about the buying process of a show horse. We're going to talk about uh, vet pre-purchase exams, and we're going to talk about how I buy horses for my students. So this video, the topics of this video sound like something that interests you, stay tuned and we'll be right back and get started. If you're interested in the topic of today's video, I'd like to ask you to click the subscribe button. That'll help you get notifications of future videos I have coming out. And also if you would click the thumbs up, that will help other viewers find my videos. And now back to today's video. I want to start off by talking about how I buy show horses for my students. I only buy show horses for my students that I have personally seen show in the in an arena. It's a little bit different if I'm buying a prospect or if I'm buying a horse for me or a horse that's going to go into training. But a horse that's going to be shown by one of my students, I only buy a horse that I have personally seen show in the arena. The reason for that is I want to know how that horse behaves in the arena. I want to know what that horse scores with the uh, a beginner rider let's say uh, if the horse has been shown or has been shown by a beginner rider I want to know how that horse behaves in the arena with the beginner rider some horses will ride good at home and then they are a little bit show sour and since that horse has been shown and I have seen it shown Chances are I've probably seen it shown for a while. We go to quite a few shows. We go to some little open beginner shows around locally. I go to the my local AQHA affiliate shows. I go to my local NRHA shows and my local National Rain Cow Horse Association shows. So I see a lot of horses and there are a lot of horses in my local area that I have, I've known for a long time and some of them for a couple of different owners usually when you're buying a horse for a beginner rider that rider is going to learn on that horse and in a couple of years the, typically the rider is going to be ready to step up to a more advanced horse eventually so the horses that I'm buying for a more beginner type rider or they are going to be a beginner horse so I so a lot of these horses I've seen with multiple riders and I know how they behave with different riders. So with that being said, I have a pretty good idea of how a horse is gonna behave with my student. That helps make a good experience for my student and it helps to make really an easier job for me because I know what to expect with that horse. If I was to buy a horse off the internet that I have not seen shown, really have limited knowledge of the horse. I don't know what habits that horse has that I'm gonna to have to go in and fix. It might need some training, it might run off in rundowns, might run to the arena, to the arena gate. I, I just don't know. There's all kind of arena habits that a horse could have. But if I've seen a horse show for an extended period of time, I have a pretty good concept of what that horse is. I want to talk a little bit about pre-purchase ex vet exams. So a pre-purchase vet exam, that vet gives you a snapshot of that horse on that day. He can do a flex test, test for lameness. He can, he can take x-rays, look at uh, potential joint issues. But that what he tells you is a snapshot for that day. So that horse might be lame that day you don't really know if it is chronic lameness or maybe the horse stepped in a hole that morning so all you know is that that horse is lame on that day and the other thing about x-rays x-rays are great if you don't have any other information if i'm buying a horse that i don't know anything about yes i am definitely going to x-ray that horse but any of you that have been around horses for a long period of time i'm sure you have seen horses that have good x-rays and have sore joint issues and also horses that have bad x-rays 
but it never shows up when you ride. So that vet pre-purchase exam is a snapshot of that horse on that day. So when I'm buying a horse for a student that I have seen shown for multiple years, I feel like I have better information to go on than just a snapshot that day. I have information for that horse for a period of a couple of years normally. I know the owners for many years. If uh, uh, we talk to, it's a very friendly group and we talk to all of our, our um, other people that are at the show, show and in the events that we show in, and naturally, if somebody misses a show and you ask, oh, we missed you at the last show, and if, if it's a horse issue, they're usually going to tell you, oh, my horse was sore, we pulled the shoe, or I wasn't feeling good. You're going to have a pretty good idea just by knowing the owners and knowing the people, the history of that horse. And if, that, if I've seen a horse show for two, three, four, even more years, and that horse has never missed a show because of a lameness issue, to me that is a better knowledge of that horse's soundness than a vet pre-purchase exam. So usually when I buy a, a horse for a client that I've known for multiple years, I typically don't do a vet pre-purchase exam because I feel like my knowledge of that horse over several years is more valuable than the snapshot that that vet can give me on that day. This horse that I'm going to look at today is owned by a person. It's about five hours away, so we have a pretty good drive. The, um, the person that owns this horse, I used to coach her on this horse. So I have a real good knowledge of the horse. I know the horse's habits. I know I remember how we used to I used to coach her. It's been a couple of years since I coached her on this horse. She was a, a youth rider at the time. And since then, she has gone off to college, and the horse is standing out in the pasture, and that's why the horse is for sale. So I know the horse has been standing in the pasture for a year or two, not doing a whole lot, but I know the horse's history when it was shown. I know the horse has been shown regularly, and I know the horse has not had any soundness issues while I was coaching her showing this horse. So I feel pretty confident about the horse's soundness, I want to make sure there's no new issues that have come up in the last year that the horse has been standing in the pasture. You never know, it might get a lag in a fence, or I mean, there's all kind of stuff that can happen. Everybody that has had horses knows that. So I want to look at that. I'm going to ride the horse and make sure that he rides like he did back then. At the time when I was coaching her, I rode the horse, and I know this horse pretty good. So. This is the type of situation that I like to have when I'm buying a horse for a client. It's, uh, it's setting my client up for success and it's setting me up for success with my client. If you have any questions or comments about vet pre-purchase exams, or if you have any questions or comments about buying horses for beginner riders, Post your comments down in the bottom of the video, and, and uh, I'd love to hear what they are. And uh, I'd like to hear about other people's experiences buying horses. I know right now the market is uh, really a seller's market. It's hard to find good show horses. Um, there's a demand on good show horses. And a lot of people are turning to the internet to buy a horse, which if you're looking for a prospect or something, I, that's that's okay. You can buy a good horse on the internet, but personally, I just will not buy a show horse on the internet. My, my thinking is, everybody that shows regular is around a group of people, and if somebody has to turn to the internet to show the horse, to sell the horse, then that raises re a red flag with me why didn't somebody else in their show community buy that horse? Um, I know when I go to shows, I know the horses that have been there for years. I know the horse level of competition. And if somebody is looking for a horse, a beginner horse or even a more advanced horse, you're gonna look at those horses that are winning to purchase. 
the horses that are running off with their rider or the rider can't get shown for whatever reason sometimes it's not the horse's fault sometimes it's the rider's uh, inexperience and but the good horses that are winning with beginner riders I just don't see a reason why those horses need to be shown need to be sold on the internet so if I see a horse a, a beginner show horse for sale on the internet it just raises a red flag with me I've been traveling for a little under four hours now. I have a little bit over an hour to go. I'm about to cross the Mississippi River Bridge at Vicksburg. I've done this, I don't know how many times, more than I can count. And I always love seeing the Mississippi River. If you've never seen it, never crossed it, been there, put your feet in it, it is definitely something to see. That's the old Mississippi River Bridge next to me. Let's see what I can get on this side. And that's looking down river. Always love seeing the Mississippi River. And I crossing the river here at Vicksburg, just a little side note. And all our travels I go to a lot of national parks, and one of the best national parks I've ever been to is the Vicksburg Military Park, the, the National Military Park in Vicksburg, I think is actually what it's called. If you've never been there, it's it's definitely worth making a stop. I've been to battlefields and national parks all over the country, and it's probably one of the best I've ever been to. So, uh, a little over an hour to go, and I'll let you know when we get close. Okay, so I made it after a long drive from meeting the owner at a, a covered arena close to her house. Here are some snapshots of his legs. He pretty much looks exactly like what he did when I coached her before on this horse. I don't see any anything new that I need to be concerned about. He's been out in the pasture like I'd said, so he's not been blanketed. He's got a winter coat. Um, but he, for the most part, looks just like he did when she was riding him. I want to take a minute and talk about, uh, I get a lot of com uh, questions about confirmation on a horse. And if this was a horse that I was looking at uh, a prospect to put in training, I would really look hard at the horse's confirmation. But this is a, a, an older seasoned horse. He's been there. He's trained. And at this point, the horse knows his job, he does his job, and unless there's a confirmation problem um, that might cause an issue in the future, uh, such as arthritis or something with a joint because of crooked legs or something, I don't really care what the horse's confirmation is. Uh, he does his job, he knows his job, and if he's not put together exactly perfect, I don't really care. Um, because his confirmation is not why I'm buying him. I'm buying him because of the job that he does. So I get that question a lot about confirmation and that's just a little bit about my thoughts about buying uh, a finished horse and evaluating their confirmation. So here we're saddling him up and he's acting like a broke horse which is what I was expecting. Um, you see me kind of throwing my saddle around and I'm going to behave around him and saddle him up and, and basically treat him like a horse, the horse that I expect him to be and see how he reacts. And he was behaving exactly like I expected him to behave. In a minute I'm going to get on him and ride him around just a little bit. Um, That is the owner there that I'm talking to, Jesse. Um, you see that AQHA Novice Championships jacket. She did She did win that on this horse. Um, Jesse's a great kid. To me, she's a kid. I mean, even though she's in college, to me, she's a kid. But uh, she had made the comment when we was saddling the horse up that everything that she ever won, she won on this horse. And... Uh, 
it's, I know it really hard was really hard for her to sell this horse, but going off to college, she really didn't have the time. And uh, the person that I'm looking for to ride this horse, it's a, a young adult that's just learning how to show and going to be very well cared for. So it's just it's a good situation, a good arrangement for everybody. So we're putting uh, putting some boots on and uh, some splint boots and some bell boots and he's just he's standing there like I would expect him to be um, Jesse had this horse I'm not sure exactly how many years but I think it was she bought him somewhere around junior high maybe upper junior high age so um, this horse has been around kids for a long time. If as you could probably tell from his bald face, he he is a gunner, um, very well bred. I turned the camera to get a better shot of the riding arena so that I could video the riding part. So when I did that, I missed being able to video putting the bridle on him. But he did accept the bridle just as I would expect him to. No, no issues there. Here I'm tightening the saddle up. And he's standing there just fine like I would expect him to be. I personally always move a horse's feet after I tighten the saddle. Just something that I've always learned to do. Just seems like it's more comfortable for the horse and it's just whether the young horse or older horse is just something I do. Now here it's uh I'm a little stiff from five hours in the truck, but uh I managed to get up there and uh he stood there just fine with me kinda of pulling on him and not doing a great job of getting up there. And uh this horse is showing me that he is so far is exactly like he always has been really like how still he stood to get on even with me pulling on him like I did um, re really like this horse I liked him before and I, I'm, I still like this horse so far I'm gonna ride him around I'm gonna warm him up a little bit and I'm gonna see if I feel any um, any movements um like any soreness anywhere that's basically what i'm looking for see if i feel any issues in his movement and make sure that his maneuvers are like they were before um, any differences than what they were when jesse was showing him so just walking him around here getting him warmed up it's a cold day and I want to make sure I warm him up good. This horse is in his early teens, so he's he's not a young horse. Uh, he's not an old horse either, but he deserves to be warmed up slowly to um, be fair to him. Altogether, I rode this horse maybe 15 minutes total. There was no reason for me to ride him a real long time. I'm not trying to school this horse. I'm just trying to see what he is. So I trotted him around, warmed him up good. Went through his maneuvers, looked a few circles, a couple of stops. If you notice, I do my stops um, where they would be in a rundown. Because I just want to see how good he rates his speed. It's not so much the maneuver, which I do want to see how he does maneuver. But I want to see how he does the approach to each maneuver. So I did his stops uh, where they would be in the rundowns. Just did a couple of easy stops, nothing hard. Did a couple of lead changes, spun him a little bit each direction. And overall, this horse was pretty much exactly what I expected him to be. Very easy to ride. Uh, very Never did tell me no, no matter what I asked him to do. There was one lead change right there. Got it around in the loose, easy rain rated his speed very well never once acted like he wanted to run off or bow up and and actually this is a horse you have to kind of pedal you have to push to make go 
So very appropriate horse for um, somebody just learning how to ride a reining horse. And uh, here I think I'm coming in to do a stop. There we go, nice easy stop. This is it's not a real high scoring horse. This is not like a 72 horse or anything. This is probably a, a, a 70 horse, which is perfectly fine for somebody learning to ride a reining horse. Here we do a spin one direction and starts to spin very easy. I could probably spur on him a little bit and speed it up, but really what I'm looking for right here is asking him to spin, stay out of his way and just see what he does. See if he does his job or see if he walks out of the spin. I want to make sure that the, my new rider doesn't have to work to keep him in the spin. I want to know if I ask him to spin, does he just spin or do you have to constantly keep him in the spin? So he was very easy to start, very easy to stop. Um, I was really pleased with what I saw uh, with this horse. I think he's going to be a good fit for the rider that I'm evaluating him for. There's a backup right there, backed up very easy. Didn't have to pull on his face, just pushed my feet forward and, and smooched a little bit and he come on back. Lope departures are very smooth. Um, here we're coming down to do another stop. One of the things I wanted to know was, did he get hot after a stop? Which he did not. He was pretty much the, had the same amount of energy, the same amount of go, uh, no matter what maneuver I did with him, which is, is great for a beginner rider. It's what I wanted to see. Low departures are easy. He always picked up the lead that I asked for. I think here I spin him one more time each direction. Starts to spin nice. Stays in it nice. I, I'm really pleased with what I've seen. Jesse has done a, a terrific job of maintaining this horse. Um, I didn't find any bad habits. He's a very solid beginner level type horse. Um, I'm really impressed with how Jesse has, has maintained this horse. That's, that's pretty much all I need to see. Um, horse maintained its same amount of energy no matter what maneuver I asked for. All the maneuvers when I asked, he did them without any hesitation. And I didn't have to work to keep him into a spin or into a stop. I, I asked and the horse said yes sir and did it. That's exactly what I was looking for. Here we asked him to just load in the trailer just to see. See how he did. I expected him to be good and, and he was. I, I am really pleased with this horse. This horse is going to uh, fit my, my student very well I believe. Okay, so I met the owner at a covered arena that's close to her house. Rode him there. He, he did real good. Basically exactly the way I remember him being before. Um, really nice horse. This is going to be really good first reigning horse for this new owner. So left the arena and went by her house. Did all the paperwork. Did all the transfer forms. He is triple registered. American Quarter Horse, American Paint Horse, and Pinto Horse Association. So we had to do all three transfers, got that done, and seal the deal, and now he's in the trailer back behind me, headed back home. We've got a, about a five hour trip home. I wanna take a minute to talk about hauling horses, distances, and time in the trailer. Some people might think five hours in a trailer is a long time, and it, it, it could be for some horses, it kind of depends on what the horse is used to. If you was to take a, a, a horse that's never been hauled more than an hour from his house and put him in the trailer and haul him five, six hours, it's probably going to be a little bit stressful on that horse because it's not used to being hauled that, that long. But this horse has been, has been shown a lot. He's been hauled a lot. He's been hauled all over the country to shows. So five hours in the trailer to this horse is not a big deal. So 
as far as distance that just means it, it just depends on what the horse is used to it's 48 degrees today i've got all the windows closed except for just a little bit just so it gets a little bit of air circulation so it don't get too stuffy and uh he's he's going to be fine for the trip home i don't expect there to be any issues because he has been hauled a good bit So that concludes my video today on going to look at, evaluate, and purchasing a, a horse. I hope you found this video uh, helpful and interesting. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to, to answer them. And thank you for watching.